go. Maybe turn the music down a little bit. Hopefully that's a good level. So, um, oh, apparently th things need to be updated. Let's do that. <laughs> I didn't catch that before the st start of the stream, so let's do that now. Um, so I think probably the first thing to do is figure out, I have a bunch of stuff, <laughs> a bunch of changes since the last stream, and I, I don't remember exactly, um, where things were at. Like what changed here? Oh, okay, so I removed because I kept on getting warnings that, oh, the version isn't required anymore or whatever. So I, I guess that's fine. Let's try doing Docker Compose up really quick and make sure that doesn't break anything. Okay, seems fine. Uh, Nginx config. Oh yeah, so Maybe, maybe I didn't come, like, I feel like this is something that I did on the last coding stream. And this seemed to make it so that our WebSocket connection stuff was working. Um, why am I in main though? Weren't we working on a branch? Interesting. Let's go back to here. Like I didn't have an open pull request or anything, right? For, for this work? No, I guess, okay. So I'd been really focused on this issue. Uh, 33, which is, you know, abstractly have the task UI elements automatically check on status. WebSockets, question mark. So as in, we have tasks. So these are like background jobs that are like uploading things to YouTube or um, doing the transcription of videos. They take some time. And right now, the way this works is I have to click this and I see the list of tasks. And I would like for there to be a way um, for tasks to push status information back to the front end. I don't have to refresh. So I was thinking WebSocket uh, connection. And I think that's what we had tested out. I wonder if that's still, there you go. Uh, like that. that I get both I think get both okay cool so we're able to connect to the WebSocket endpoint that I had made and I think as I recall the last thing we did uh, on last Sunday's stream was go into Redis and push a message and that message popped out here on the console right yes it's coming back to me it's coming back to me um, so issue 33 is what I want to be working on. And so these were changes to support that. So, and then random other things. Uh, I guess, okay, yeah, so there was a bug uh, that I found while I was actually using this application um, where after we added the tag stuff, we, um, the episode tags could be undefined or something. So I'm just having it fall back to an empty list if there's nothing there. Git list, um, turns out max of null is null. So you need this coalesce here. So it, it is an integer. I could have also made this maybe so that it handled null coming back. But uh, 
I think it defaulting to zero if there were say no episodes or the episodes didn't have an order index is fine. Um, I realized that for the upload, the bulk upload to work, the simple view, so the, the data that we're getting back from the list endpoint also needed to have these values. I updated, oh right, we added uh, WebSockets for Axum for test, task API, um, task API main. We added uh, the WebSocket endpoint and, and this stuff. So now this gets a connection to Redis and then sets up the, uh, the pub sub and subscribes to the task channel. And I think we are just literally taking the message um, up sub get message. So that's the string payload. And we send it as text to the WebSocket. So we're just passing through whatever the payload is. And then in task worker lib, um, what did I do here? Oh yeah, I did some refactoring, I think. Right, so I had these to do's, return a result. So previously, if update task status failed, um, this expect would mean that this would panic. And um, generally, I'm I'm fine with things panicking in the task worker since the task worker is just kind of like a single threaded thing that we run multiple instances of, and if it crashes, it just restarts. So we're just kind of a taking like a fail fast approach. But because of, you know, this, these operations are kind of buried, <laughs> uh, like unlike some of the things that are happening in um, the actual task worker. So this is the lib, but there's a main as well. All right, so here we're using expect, but we're, we're doing, we're, we're having this fatal error handling, this panicking happening at the level of the actual application rather than inside of the lib. Um, so basically lifting out that error handling, like moving the choice of how we're handling the errors out of the individual functions and up to this main function, literally main function for the task worker application. Seems like a good idea. Um, and then I think not a lot changed here. Like we didn't have to really change the API. The data that we needed uh, is being passed to update task status already. So the change here is in this function. Um, right, so things got moved around a little bit. So here we go. Here's actually the update task status. Uh, is basically the same, except now we have to do more matches to handle the result coming back and um, return an error instead of using expect. And then at the end, if, if the status is unchanged for some reason, although that's not typically what would happen here, but if the status, the existing set status of the task matches the new status, then we just want to stop doing anything. We only want to do publish task status if the status, the new status is different from the old one. Um, in fact, I think there are some things that we could do here that would make that clearer. You know, in retrospect, having a week to think about what we're trying to say here, right? So if I were to rename the symbol to, uh, uh, we get <laughs> we get some suggestions now. But what I want to do is I want to have like a new status, uh, new task status. I guess could be a even wordier version of that. Uh, except that's not the correct style. Rename 
name symbol. We want new task status. Um, and so that was one of two things I was thinking about here. And then the other thing is that instead of doing it this way, I think we want to do, we want to handle the exceptional case, right? So we want to say if the task status is not equal, well, let me say that a different way, actually. We want to handle the significant case. Right, so the, the, the notable case right? If task status is not equal to new task status, then we want to publish task status. Otherwise, just okay. Um, and no need for return here. So like this whole thing is an expression that will either be evaluated to the, the results of evaluating this or the results of evaluating this. So is this better? I think maybe. Um, in other languages, I might be tempted to not have, I have been tempted in the past, like it may be in JavaScript, to do like this. Uh, in Rust though, this doesn't do the right thing because what we wanna be able to do, publish task status returns a result. So if we did it this way, we would have to also return to be equivalent to the other version. And there's something to be said, especially for, we really have a Boolean situation here, a, a binary situation here, uh, where either these are not equal or they're equal, right? So really if else is probably feels a lot better anyway. In the same way that maybe if you were using a switch statement or can can switches be expressions in, in Rust? Is there is there a switch? There's not, right? Because we have or maybe there is. No. Or is there? No, 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 no. Okay. Copilot making stuff up. Um but if there was, you wouldn't you would probably want to handle like your default case, all the different cases in the switch. You wouldn't want to say, and you know, after every <laughs> arm, every case of the, the switch return. And then if it doesn't match anything after the switch to, you know, some other return, that'd be kind of strange in the same way. Maybe it makes sense just to have if else in general, even a language is where, um, this isn't, a uh, uh, an expression where it would be more like block level. Okay, so anyway, minor things that maybe maybe I think make that a little bit more straightforward to understand what's happening and why. Um, and then so then we call publish task status. Finish my kind of walk through of what's going on here. And publish task status. Uh, puts together this payload with the task and the previous status and the new status and uh, an event name just because for uh, future compatibility, we might have other events. So you might want to publish on the same pub sub. Um, maybe, I don't know. I don't, I don't have a specific use case, but I think it makes sense to have just a uh, something to note the kind of event. Just kind of trying to feature proof that. Now, I guess I should not use expect here. I'm not really sure uh, how this could fail. Uh, it says, you know, it can fail if it decides to fail or if T contains a map with non string keys. Uh, of course, we're defining a lot of that here, although there could be something weird in task. Uh, but maybe let's just um,
let's uh let's handle this right so we're gonna we're gonna do the same thing here sorry json to string data except we don't, we're not use expect so if if it's an okay if we successfully serialize we give back the message and otherwise we return an error out of this function right and at this point that goes away and that just becomes a message do we need to be as we are nope okay Um, and so our, uh, the reason this map error here is that the result that the Redis method uh, returns, that error branch is a Redis error, but I just want the error type here to just be a string, right? So we're gonna, whatever the Redis error was, we're just gonna say, be able to publish that status. I guess, you know, thinking about it, um, we probably want to have some tracing here as well. How, how, how do we do that? Yeah, something like that. Uh, and then we don't need that question mark or the semicolon. Good. So broadly, the idea is that I'm, I'm just going to commit to having the whatever, uh, well, this message really, right? So this message is going to get published to the pub sub um, in Redis, the task pub sub, and then the WebSocket uh, endpoint when it is connected to a client is going to listen, is going to subscribe. Uh, to that task pub sub and just echo that payload as is as a string just like echo it through to the front end and the front end will have to deserialize uh, this and do something with it uh, and I, I think that that is kind of like all of the the back end that we need assuming all this this works um, did we look at what changed oh yeah that, that was that and then um, oh yeah, I extracted out kind of this table stuff for the preview for uploading episodes, uh, just so I could add some more, uh, what if tags is uh, undefined or null or something and, and those things. So yeah, just sort of a, a separate bug fix. Uh, let's see, can I isolate those changes? Was it just there? No, it was also here and here. Um, yeah. And notify subscribers category tag fields. Uh, yeah, I mean that's not really what's going on. Um, ultimately, uh, fix bugs from uh, that issue that we closed, whatever issue that was. Um, number 90, if I just refer to the pull request, yeah. Can I do that? Or does this only refer to issues? I guess maybe it only refers to issues. No, I don't get a preview for that either. So I'm just gonna say, I think, I think it's the case that, like if I put in 90 here, yeah, that's the pull request. Okay, so the numbers are, using GitHub for all these years, uh, you think I would know things like that. But anyway, all right. Uh, let's see other changes. Um, did I do that too? Yeah, I guess I did also add depends on Redis. And 
remove version because apparently that's not needed anymore. Uh, okay, what does this do? Entry, okay, here we go. Add WebSocket support for task updates. This commit adds WebSocket support to the task API. Uh-huh, uh-huh. The server pu publishes a message. The server uh, publishes a message to the task channel in Redis, uh, which is then, since you connect clients via WebSocket connection, this allows clients to receive immediate updates of tasks without the need for polling. All right. That's actually a really nice uh, message, commit message. Uh, which is, is kind of funny because I am still gonna squash all my commits. But hey, it'll be there in the in the summarized version. And we're not done with this, but um, it's, it's progress. We need to do the front end parts of this as well. So for the front end, what are, what are we doing? Um, it's a question. So I know the, the enterprise version of React Admin has some fancy, like uh, what they call real time data provider and UI components and things. Uh, I, I don't currently, I'm not paying for the enterprise version of, of React Admin, and uh, we'll, just, we'll just, we'll just, we'll do without. So the question is, how do I want to do this? Uh, it's been quite a long time since I've done uh, any um, WebSocket things on the front end. And especially uh, from React. Um, so we have this task drawer component, right? Let's make a little room. So the task drawer here, this is the menu. Let's, let's go actually, let's take that room back away. <laughs> Let's go over here and look at the UI, right? So um, we have tasks drawer, which is both this button and this modal E thing that pops out. The, the menu here um, coming from material UI. And then Maybe, what would be a good way of doing this? Um, so a couple thoughts would be doing something inside of the data provider feels appropriate. Let's uh, go check the React admin docs uh, because there are some things in there that might be relevant. The question is gonna be if there's anything that's relevant that we can also actually use without having to pay money. All right, so there's this whole section on real time and you can see the little icons here. I mean, these are all things like use publish, use subscribe, our enterprise edition hooks. Subscribes to the events from a topic on mount and unsubscribe on on mount. Unmount. Hey, brainless. Good morning. How's it going? Uh, I guess if nothing else, I'm kind of looking for some inspiration here for how we might build something. Since I don't have access to this, uh, unless I want to pay for Enterprise Edition.
and I don't. <laughs> so how do they, um, so I mean they describe, right? So you can, it subscribes to the events on mount and then subscribe on unmount. And the way it's used is you have a callback. You pass in the callback to the hook and you give it the name of the thing that you want to subscribe to, uh, which is interesting. Um, we, we're, we're not gonna be that sophisticated. All right, what does Brandon say? All right, uh, all good. Happy I decided to work yesterday as with no distractions completed my work, nice. How, how about myself? I'm doing good. Uh, I rarely have things that uh, interfere with my weekend. So yesterday I spent a lot of time just uh, not not coding, not thinking about work, not, uh, you're just like reading uh, some fanfic, uh, some, you know, various, <laughs> uh, things and watching YouTube videos and lurking in a few streams and um, yeah just not not doing a whole lot of anything uh, relaxing and I guess part of that is also procrastinating on the the video editing stuff which at some point uh, I'm gonna catch up on maybe maybe that will be when I further automate <laughs> the process of editing VODs uh, even more than this. I'll be able to catch up. Uh, but yeah, otherwise good. Got some some good sleep and here with my, my usual coffee in the morning. Um, okay. So right now, the WebSocket endpoint, like we just hook up to it and we get messages. There's not really any other subscription. Need coffee, yep, yeah, absolutely. How could you forget that? Uh, I mean, to be fair, I've definitely had days where stuff, you know, occupied me and I realized, especially in the afternoon, because I usually have I usually have two shots of espresso in the morning and then at, in the afternoon after lunch. So there'll be days where I just get super busy and then I realize it's like, oh, it's four o'clock. It's maybe a little too late for those two shots of espresso. Um, so things that I want, things that I want. So we have the WebSocket endpoint. We need something in the data provider uh, to hook up to the, the WebSocket. Um, because, you know, I don't want to scatter details about like endpoints, URLs, those sorts of things throughout the code base. We have a nice kind of, it's a little messy, but it's all in one place and that's nice in and of itself. Uh, one place where all that, those details are uh, on the in the front end anyway, uh, and I don't want to ruin that. So we'll add a custom method in the data provider um, to be able to get a hold of this WebSocket. Now we could probably look at what React Admin is doing to support this uh, as enterprise stuff, and maybe we can see if we can do something kind of similar, so that if I did. Uh, eventually switch to using the Enterprise Edition or um, maybe some of those things became available in the future version, uh, in the open source version, that, um, you know, be ready for that without a lot of changes. So we'll see. And then the other thing is I think um, a hook, um, similar but different to this, this use subscribe hook, um, Probably what I'll call it is just like, so on the one hand, I'm tempted to just call it like use WebSocket, right? Because the WebSocket connection we're gonna have just echoes whatever messages. So it's not specific to tasks, but we know that 
what we're expecting are task status updates. Um, so how about like a uh, use task status subscription hook? Sure. Uh, and what I'm thinking with this is that at some point, if we did have something like you subscribe where you would pass in the name of a specific like pub sub type topic, um, then use task status subscription could just be a wrapper around that. And it's, it's kind of like a migration path. Um, in the context, that, like at this scale, that's not going to matter. It's going to be one place where it's being used. Um, this is not, you know, a hundred thousand line code base. It's not being used in 50 different places. Um, so that's less of a concern, but in general, thinking about <laughs> how one could eventually swap out a particular implementation, uh, in a way that is not going to be awful. It's probably something good to think about. All right. Um, so. And then somewhere we'll need to actually use the hook, right? So the hook is going to use the data provider to be able to talk to the backend. Something needs to use the hook to get the information about task, sta task status and do something with it. I, I'm not sure what. So maybe in tasks drawer list, do we have state? Right, right. So task drawer list has all of this information from use tasks, which is a custom hook I'm, I made. And then it renders it out. So how is this going to have to change if we're now going to also have information coming from the web socket? Um, right, so currently this is using use get list to pull information about tasks. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe a change of plans. What if instead we don't try to fetch the list of tasks? Like we could just change um, the UI here. Like right now, we're fetching a list of all tasks. What if instead we only showed information here based on what's coming over the WebSocket? Uh, the downside of that would be that unless we were persisting that information in the front end somewhere, um, if like the component gets unmounted, then that goes away, right? So then we would need to have some kind of persistence in the front end for that data, which we don't have right now. Right now, what we're doing is we're just saying, um, you know, we can fetch it from the back end, whatever tasks there are. Huh. Hmm. Or I could do something sim simpler, right? So the list. Uh, now let's go back one more. Yeah, task drawer list uses use tasks, but task drawer list is only visible uh, when the menu is open. And then we have task drawers button, 
a tasks drawer button, which is uh, another component here. And this gets the count from use tasks. Instead, for now, maybe what we can do is we can we can have kind of a, a compromise. So we'll have um, this part use the uh, the get endpoint to pull the data when it's opened or when we click refresh. Um, but this view. We don't hit the backend endpoint. We don't use the use task hook. Instead, this will subscribe to the WebSocket and that number will go up every time we see a task status change. Right? So what that would mean would be we would change this Did, uh, did you mention that you moved to a new project? Yeah, I think you were saying something on Friday that you got pulled off onto a, a new project and you had to uh, leave your old project into the uh, hopefully capable hands of others. Was uh, what I recall <laughs> from before. So what if we did something like this? this doesn't work because that that file doesn't exist yet but we can uh, we can incrementally let's just like go what bottom up uh, and and just add all the missing bits ts uh, function Interesting, interesting. Uh, Brendan says, I'm still unhappy with that. Oh, well, blank canvas. Yeah, exactly. Um, so this is like a completely new thing that you get to uh, build from the ground up. Uh, a, a greenfield project. So Structurally, this function, it uses use effect, right? So we can say we do some stuff when we're mounted and we can do a thing when we're unmounted. And that seems fine. And we have some internal state, task status. Um, yeah, it's... Uh, all it has is the bare bone structure and then an, uh, HMAC module. Uh, HMAC. <laughs> uh, message authentication. Oh yeah, so uh, as in the, the cryptographic thing. Or are we talking about something else? Hash-based message authentication codes. Yep, okay. All right, so... Hmm. What do I, I... I do want to have some kind of internal state here in this hook, right? Because that's what we're going to use to keep account Um, and other things. Actually, I have an idea. I have, I have an idea. Um, use the, use.
I was hoping that Copilot would would handily write something for me, but uh, uh, use effect and use reducer. Now, how does use reducer work? So right now we do not have complex state logic, but um, one, I rarely get a chance to use this. Uh, two, it's my project so I can do whatever I want. I want. And three, um, I think there are cases where we may have, like we're gonna have multiple messages coming in about task status. We might wanna aggregate them. Actually, may maybe this will, this will be good. Um, and Brainless says, be back in a bit, all right. Uh, yeah, an alternative to U-State introduced. Um, it doesn't say when it's introduced. It says it's version 16.8. Uh, so. I feel like that's not... Hold on, can we just go to the definition of use reducer? Okay, so it takes a reducer and an initial state and an initializer. And the reducer is of type R, extends reducer, so previous state action. Okay. Um, state, new state. This, this is not this is not correct. Uh, preview state and action. All right. And then for right now. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Uh, we're just gonna have this return uh, the existing state. As in uh, regardless of what the action is, we're just going to do nothing. Um, this is going to be different. And then the return shape for use reducer is a reducer state and a dispatch. Okay, that's what I, that, that makes sense, right? So the reducer state is um, task status and this is uh, dispatch or whatever I want to call it, really. I mean, I could have gone with the other names, they just don't make sense in this context. Uh, the other thing I should do here, there we go. That gets rid of one error. Um, I'm gonna get rid of that because that doesn't do anything. Um, we're gonna go this way. So something I do know um, is that this hook needs to return something that has a count property so let's let's start defining that interface um task status is just not a good name for this i mean on the other hand it is used task status subscription so maybe maybe i will or i'll go the other way I'm gonna rename this to tasks subscription. Uh, this this is not a thing. So what we actually need to do here is we need to get a hold of the um, the data provider. Yep, from React Admin. Here's where we're gonna start pulling things in from React Admin. And I could call dot subscribe. What did, um, ignore errors for a second. Can we go back to the React admin docs? So data provider requirements. So this is how their React uh, admin real time module kind of is working. And so there's a subscribe and an unsubscribe and a publish um, with topics. Hmm. 
Maybe maybe I'll 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 mirror this just for um, future proofing. Something like this. Although, what did I do in the uh, in the back end? Was it task or tasks? Uh... Oh, some warnings here. I should I should attend to those before I merge this. I mean, the, the name doesn't have to be consistent. You know, what we're doing in the front end here, I'm not going to take the string and nothing I'm gonna do is gonna affect what this is doing. Um, but, hmm, actually, That's a question. Why is this task, but this is tasks? Because they're different things, they're not related, but should they be the same? Uh, I don't I don't think it matters that much right now. And especially because at least the way Huh. Yeah, I think I think it's not worth worrying about right now because ultimately, if we end up in a situation where we want to have a WebSocket, a WebSocket that deals with things other than tasks, and it's just a single thing, then um, we have to consider some bigger questions of like, well, this is the task API, like this is a separate microservice. Do we need to like move the WebSocket into a service just for it? Um, there's not really a lot of strong reasons right now for me in this context to even have all these different microservices other than, you know, trying out doing that sort of thing uh, with Rust and Axum and all these things, uh, which is a reason. It's, it's not a reason if I was doing this, you know, for work that would be good necessarily, but if I was doing this for work, there would be other people potentially working on this and, you know, it would be a different context. Um, so anyway, uh, okay, if we're going to take this approach, then, oh, I see, right? So I think the, diff the, there's, there's a bit of a difference here, right? Because the, this setup, it's a shame there's not a dark mode, uh, but this setup, I think handles the idea that, um, hmm. So for me to implement an API like this and for it to make sense, I would need to handle this like tying, um, what am I trying to say? So, right now in the way I, this, this is this is kind of shaping up to work wherever i use this hook if i use it five different places that's going to be five different uh subscriptions five different outgoing connections to this web socket um and what's ha what is set up in in kind of the design that react admin would use if we were using all of the the, the real-time WebSocket stuff that isn't available for me right now, um, is that it's kind of um, moving that into kind of like a singleton inside of data provider so that that subscription only ha happens once. And then you can have multiple places in the front end that subscribe via the data provider and get um, they're callback called, but without having to have multiple connections. Right now, 
I don't really need that. Like, I don't need to worry about that because it's all, this is only going to be used in one place. So how hard would it be for me inside of the data provider to do that? And is it worth it to handle that versus having a much more naive subscribe? Um... to do that. I wonder at this point if I don't want to have something that's much more specific here, right? So like task status subscription. Um, or subscribe. to task statuses or status, whatever. Something like that. And then we call unsubscribe. data provider needs to be here Let's see if we can clean up some of these errors figure out how the type works on the reducer. So R extends reducer any any. So reducer has a S and A. Okay. So here we need to do something like reducer task status and then any for for the moment all right so now the thing i actually need here is account okay that gets us really close the other thing i need here is the type of the status message so the the interface the what is the payload coming back um do i have it like a, a general place for for those types i have a types.ts okay so we're gonna we're gonna define export interface this is task tasks no Task status uh, WebSocket message, uh, and it's not that. Uh, it's the the stuff that we we defined in the uh, response coming back from the backends. This thing right here. Let me blow this up a little bit. There we go. So so this stuff. So, we got a task that's a, a something. Um, let's say that the type is unknown for right now, because I don't I don't know that we actually need to do anything with task at the moment. Um, so once we do, then we can come back and define what it actually is. Previous status is a string. Let's uh, let's export a type uh, task status. Are those the statuses? Who could say? 
Looks like they're these. Queued processing complete failed invalid. Queued processing. That's a good. It's a good attempt. Complete failed and invalid are the statuses. Canceled could be a good status. It's just that happens to. Uh, it doesn't happen to be one right now. Mm, kind of makes me want to make it one. Uh, so task status is use there and there. Um, and this is all in um, this case because this needs to match what is coming back from the back end. And then event is literally the string task status task status change, right? For now, because that's the only thing that we handle. So there we go, there's that type. And then here we can say, we know that this is supposed to be this. Yeah, we don't actually use it right now, but can you just give me a thing that will auto import that type? There we go. All right. To, to do. There you go. So we'll call dispatch. It'll do some things. It'll update the count. And we can do some other things later, you know, by implementing other actions in our reducer. All right. I'm going to be back in just a couple minutes. I'm going to go stretch my legs and we'll do some more coding. BRB.